Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. Today, we're so thrilled to have my dear friend Matty here on the podcast. So, shout out to Matty. Thrilled to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're a very busy person, so we're gonna jump right into it. When we all used to live in Venice back together, you mentioned to me so many times, and we talked so many times about James Allen, right? So, tell us your favorite. James Allen book and share with us why. Having a favorite James Allen book, I think that man, it's a great question. I think, in a way, I probably mentioned this before. There's every chapter almost is such a complete thought. One sentence is like a TikTok. It's like an inspirational TikTok. Like any sentence, mm-hmm. maybe all these things added might be an interesting one. People probably know James Allen from the book "As a Man Think It," and he's yeah. often referred to as like the principal, one of the leaders in the early movement of、uh, self-help. But James Allen is far different than what you might call self-help、uh, these days. But、uh, yeah, yeah, and why? Let's think about why. So why would it be a favorite? I think that a lot of what、uh, James Allen is describing is like its mental states, these states of like peace and blessedness, or lessons that you're going to learn, right? So let's say if it's not a moment of peace, it might be a lesson, right? That lesson might not be peaceful. That lesson might be painful. So I think a lot of what James Allen dis- is discusses is that these mental states and All these things added probably as a pretty clear description of the mental states,、uh, either you know blessedness and peace, or things that are a little bit more friction, blessedness and peace, which are often lessons, but they they can be painful. They can be thoughts that that torment, or thoughts that they keep you out of knowledge, they keep you lost, and you do it to yourself. So all these things added, I think I'll go ahead and just throw that in there. But、um, I wanted to have a little quiz、uh, on James Allen because the catalog is so deep. Jazzy, do you remember any of the books? Yeah, absolutely.、Um, like actually, just. Send it to you over text. And this, when you were mentioning about peace,、um, this quote popped in my head.、Uh, from it's from the heavenly life, I believe. Is finding the divine center within his own heart. He will be pure and calm and strong and wise, and will ceaselessly radiate the heavenly life in which he lives, which is himself. So、uh, I think for me, that's <laughs> why absolutely beautiful quote, right? What do you think he meant here when he was saying divine center? Ah,、uh, great question, sir. Great question. I also love that we got a quote already in the podcast. The James Allen quotes are—they're so strong, word for word. It's like a combo punch he's throwing out on every sentence, and every punch is—he、uh, lands it so clean. <laughs> so, in this case, along with the phrase that you mentioned, right? You, you mentioned finding the divine center. And when、yeah. you're living from the divine center, you're strong and peaceful, and you radiate,、uh, you radiate like a life kind of a thing. So, and then he also says that center, which which I guess you find out is yourself. I think was the, the end of the quote. Can you read us the quote、yes. one more time, sir? Finding the divine center within his own heart, he will be pure and calm and strong and wise, and will ceaselessly radiate the heavenly life in which he lives, which is himself. All right, I really appreciate James Allen's writing because it's so poetic and, and descriptive and beautiful. Usually, so in this case,、uh, you know, the divine center—you could call it like a cathedral. Okay, so you're over there in, in、uh, Spain and Portugal.、Um, one of the ways that you live in life is you can obviously live very externally. I'm here in Las Vegas. There's incredible, huge hotels, beautiful things all around out here that have been built. And when James Allen's referring to like the,、uh, you know, finding the peace within or something like that. Uh, the divine center. Definitely referring to this cathedral because you can live in med- a, a position of meditation, right? In a state of like meditative experience within this life that keeps you calm. And I know you're a good、uh, meditator, so I think that's what it's referring to. He's talking about having a place in which you basically live, and it's within you. It's within your your being, and it's a place where it's the place where everything's generated. If you realize that you are that place, right? As some of what he's referring to at the end of that quote, and you get all those powers, you do get, you do in fact get those powers. You get,、um, you know, some wisdom and peace,、uh, you know, blessedness and you know, strength, right? All the things he said in that quote. But if you're outside, again, if you're outside of that like cathedral that you built within your own mind of, of blessed thoughts, then you're in the storm and、uh, can blow you any any which way you want.、Uh, it's no longer calm. <laughs> so I like that quote. It's a good one. Me too. Me too. I love it. When I had discussion with other people, literally about the same quote, right? And he proposed a very interesting、uh, concept or his interpretation, right? Which I think 
I want to hear your opinion on it because I believe that uh, you and him are describing in different words, but in our culture, like we use language to describe something. Like, and a lot of times, especially on the podcast here in the future, we use so many words to describe almost the undescribable, right? So, anyway, he called the divine center what he believed the divine center is actually the, in the modern day especially in the positive psychology is like a flow state which is in the common language is like being in the zone which is a person performing some activity and fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity do you feel like how you are describing and what he was describing are more or less the same thing or uh, good question. I think that they're actually different, bro. I think they're different. So, okay. yeah, and they're both wonderful things. We can talk yeah. about flow state briefly. So people that hear flow state, first of all, the words are weird. Flow state. I was never a big fan of flow state. But the uh, the idea to me, when you're in a flow state, and of course, there's experts on flow state that maybe can tell you when you're in it or when you're not. How do you know if you're in flow state? <laughs> uh, endless questions uh, about because flow states may be new, new language. Oh, it's a new idea, flow state. Well, here's my opinion on flow state. Flow state is when you're super busy, but you know exactly, mm. you know so clearly what it is you're doing and why. Mm. It's a state of flow state to me. It can certainly be a meditative state, or at least in, in my interpretation. Man, when you go to a conference and you know exactly what your goals are and mm. you look people very straight, uh, you tell only the facts you give the situation only the time that it requires, right? Because you're on to the next, you, it's a flow. You're on a thing and it might end that night at midnight or it might end that night at 8 a.m. the next day. But you have your, you can call it like an entrepreneurial goal or you have your humanitarian goal or you have your own personal uh, you know, agenda that you either want to achieve that day or you want to achieve that day in school that you have this sense of clarity about your mission. And, and it's a kind of a practice. It's kind of a very actionable thing, flow state. To me, the divine center is definitely a meditative state where, you know, flow state would arise, but the meditative state, it's all potential. Flow state is like the actuation of the potential. Meditative state is the potential. And the flow state is when you're out hustling it up and you're flowing, yeah. through, flowing through the world. So yeah, some thought. Amazing. Thank you for that. Follow up question: Are You practicing uh, the Taoism like the Wu Wei? The Tao. If so, why, why or why not? <laughs> wow, I love the Taoism here. Um, the Tao. I mean, I, it could be practiced, but even just practicing it is flow state and not flow state. So the Tao is both. The Tao is the beautiful meditation that guides you into warmth and peace, and the Tao is also the destruction of peace. And the destruction of your meditative state, that's the Tao. The Tao is the place where all chaos can be, which forms uh, you know, the, grain of, uh, the grain of enlightenment that gets you out. Uh, the Tao is uh, the yin and yang, and they're both. So I don't know how often James Allen might have referred to the Tao. He did refer to Buddhism a lot, uh, yeah. you know, which, is, which is probably kind of more on the traditional. Uh, granted, James Allen was around back in like the 1800s and 1900s. I don't know how far the Tao might have reached to him or how well it might have been studied because it was translated maybe a little bit after or more, maybe more translations came of the Tao after his, uh, his time. His times, right, maybe, yeah. Well, we love the Tao, brother. So I got some questions for you. Man. Oh, please. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, are you able to meditate right now? Are you getting a couple good sessions in? Or I feel like in this particular time or in this week, um, I just got to Porto, which is like northern part of uh, Portugal. Uh, totally different vibes and totally different city than Lisbon, which is the capital, right? Like here it's like European summer, right? And as Matt, he has a lot of the audience out there know, European summer, it's just fantastic. It's like so energetic. I've got, you know, two days, right? And the, the weather is absolutely amazing, right? It's like, I think like 90s, um, which is like 25 to 28 degrees. And it, on the streets, it's like full of people like Americans and Spanish and like every single country, uh, different parts of Europe, you name it, right? There's like so much energy on the street. Again, as I mentioned, I've only been here two days, right? So I want to go see the cathedral. I want to go see the museum. I'm going to go see the culture. And uh, there are full of musicians playing their own arts and music on the street. Super good vibe. So actually circling back to that, I found myself 
more in the flow state, which is like more out and about, walk around in the city. And also the city is a little bit hilly. So it's like not as, maybe not as hectic as San Francisco, but it's like, you're constantly going up and down like the, the small hills, right? So you do a lot of walking every day. I did like 26,000 steps. I am indeed meditating. Uh, I actually made time to make sure I meditate one hour today. However, I feel, again, maybe this feeling is also my mind is telling me, it's like making up something in my mind, right? But I... At least I can speak from in this moment that I am more energetic, let's say be let's say compared to the time when I'm in the countryside and all I all surrounding me just mountains and grass and cows, right? Mm. So like here I definitely feel like a little more charged. The just in case of crypto people are listening out there, it's like you walk into like, I don't know, like youth crypto con or whatever the crypto events are you're going to, and it's you just feel the energy right away. So that's yeah. a good vibe. Um, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. And then like people are like super nice. Up and down in one busy street without hearing like one, two, or even three, four, five musicians are playing their music on the street, which is, yeah, uh, super cool. That sounds With nice. That. We're waiting for you out here in Portugal, my G. When you coming? <laughs> when you coming to Europe? As yeah, soon, soon. Today's July 6th in 20, the year 2022. Yeah. It's an interesting... Yeah. Yeah, we just came off of the 4th of July over here in the United States. And the United States yeah. seems to be facing some uh, headwinds in our sales, starting to waffle a little bit. People don't know what's going on. <laughs> so yeah. that sounds like some good vibes over there in Portugal. Yeah, you know, so some new like, good vibes. And then definitely, I, I know for a fact, I'm going to see you, see you out here soon. So with that said, you said you mentioned you're busy. For me, I feel like every single time a woman are catching up, it's always good vibes, a thousand percent. Also at the same time that you are always busy, you're always from one task to another, as we mentioned about, especially you mentioned about like war, like warrior mode with all the busyness and the, and the things to accomplish. Like, how do you really feel? Right. Because I'm, um, you know, and the, so that's, that's the question. And then I want to take a step back the layer, the layer under that is the reason I say that is that from America and then went back to China and then moved to Europe. I really see the European lifestyle, which is like, you know, you've been here so many times and you understand, right? Like the European lifestyle is just like, yeah, you know, we would do our work and then it's like, and then, and then we literally just chill, right? So I would say that nowadays I'm more so similar to the European culture, you know, the, the lifestyle, the um, chillness, if you will. So I want to hear like, uh, your perspective on this, maybe in America or in China or a lot of places in the world, like really it's go-getter culture versus, you know, like the, mm. the very chill lifestyle, chill culture. Like, how do you feel personally, Maddie? Cool, cool. Yeah, you know, I'm going to, I'll refer to James Allen since that's one of our <laughs> the subjects uh, here, but also make it personal as well. So having things to do is interesting. You know, having something to do with your life is interesting. Uh, a lot of people get caught doing things that aren't good for them anyway. Some days you would have been better off just staying in bed. I'll give some examples of that. Uh, a lot of people around the world are, they're in debt, credit card debt. They wake up and they spend more money than they have. And the next day they start a little bit further behind. So doing things, almost no matter what it is, right? So let's say you're on a mission to save the world or slay the dragon or be the hero. It's important to know that, you know, in some of those books, everything works out. Uh, the guy slays their, you know, whoever slays the dragon and is the hero. But in the real world, it's not really like that. Like I said, things don't work out, right? I love, I love saying these things because it's important to mention it to people, you know, especially people that are entrepreneurs or people that are in crypto. It's like, well, you know, we're changing the world. We're building Web3. We're building a whole new, you know, solution. That's awesome. And we are working on that every day. But the flip side of that is doing nothing, right? Uh, that, that's kind of mm -hmm. quite a Taoist principle. But also being aware. Even if you're busy, busy, busy doing stuff, it's being aware that you might be making mistakes. You might not even be going in the right direction. So there's a lot of trust when you're out grinding, grinding, grinding. If you're someone that's in touch with, you know, certain like values, you may be working, working hard every day and you have your reasons and you think that everything's, you know, perfectly crystal clear and in this box of all your reason and you're super smart. And maybe you are one of the righteous who's here on the planet and really bringing uh, truth and vibes and care and compassion and love and and light to the world. Maybe that is you every single day. So you could say that that's some Americans. Let's say, you know, because you, you were contrasting the American, you know, you were saying the contrast between the American and the European lifestyle. Well, it's true. Here we're working, working, working. And even if we're working, we may not be getting where we want. We may be going backwards. So that's probably my personal opinion. Like if you go, mm -hmm. if you go to a crypto conference right now and there's 30,000 people there and most of them are broke. <laughs> okay. They might have worthless JPEGs. They might yeah. not even 
understand crypto. You might be at this place with a bunch of activity and a bunch of entrepreneurship, but some of it might be going in the wrong direction. You can look at people that are invested in Luna. Well, they mm -hmm. wanted to make investments and they wanted to move their life forward. They wanted to, to change their situation. They wanted to be a part of something decentralized. Maybe there's all these reasons we could say that were there good reasons for being a part of Luna. Yeah. Uh, they want to be a part of a community. Well, did it mm -hmm. move them forward? Maybe they lost everything. Who knows? So I think that that's maybe my response. I really appreciate, I think, doing nothing. Uh, it's under, it's way underrated. And here in the United States, yeah, we're working. It's it's uh, July 6th, 4th of July, July just ended two days ago. And of course, everyone's busy. Everyone that is, is busy is busy. If you were, if you were busy before this whole economic uh, thing we're in now, you're probably very busy now. So yeah. How does that work for me personally? I don't really know. I think that I'm a little bit of a, a different character that likes a little bit more. Um, I don't mind being busy, but I like a good uh, a good calm water. You know, I like a good calm, smooth water too. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Were you in Luna at all? Did you lost a bag? Or I'll tell you about Luna actually. So the more you hang out with people that trade crypto. <laughs> it makes you want yeah. to trade, especially if you've done it before. Um, I'm going to tell some stories, I guess. So I used yeah, to trade please. crypto back on Poloniex when Poloniex was a thing. And I think it still is, maybe. Uh, it was bought by Goldman Sachs. And this was before mm -hmm. you had KYC. This is before um, any of these altcoins existed, right? Uh, I think Ethereum was around like $20. Ethereum was $20. Bucks. Bitcoin was like $300 or you know, yeah. $600. Bucks, and it went up and down from there. I can remember fairly clearly when these exchanges would stop or when they would halt, or when they would mm. freeze, or when mm. an asset would get locked and was not transferable. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened with Luna. Uh, thankfully, with Luna, I wasn't, me and my group and our investments that we seek to manage wisely, we really didn't have, let's say, direct exposure to Luna. But everyone, if you're in crypto, you have exposure to market sentiment and these macro moves. So yeah, yeah. we our, our portfolio is down as a result of that. Now, having said that, uh, and kind of going back to my comment about trading, yeah, so I was hanging out with people that trade at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was at a conference and some of my buddies were trading. So, well, I got on KuCoin, okay? So I decided I'll trade Luna. If there's chaos, I can remember back to the chaos of years ago and what an opportunity that was. And I'm not saying this is <laughs> for anyone that wants to trade. Trading is losing. <laughs> uh, I'll you know, if you ask these people to trade, uh, to be honest with you, how much Ethereum they might have lost just in transaction fees or they, they were betting, you know, you trade against Ethereum. Well, if Ethereum is going up, you're, you're losing, even if your other assets going up too. So uh, most people lose, but it doesn't make me afraid to do it. So I actually did. I traded Luna uh, just because, uh, because I was around people that trade and it was something to do that day. And I can remember yeah. it going so far down, brother. I can remember it hit six zeros. When I could buy one million for one dollar, one million Luna for one dollar. It's maybe yeah, three yeah, times yeah. higher than that right now. Or it was six zeros. It's a lot, six zeros. And it was only down there for a very, very short time. But I was dollar yeah. cost averaging in. Uh, you know, you know how that works. So I was buying Luna when everyone was like, "It's over. The project's dead." And I was like, "Well, at a minimum, it's a meme point. And at, at a minimum, I've seen this stuff play out before. And I'm at least going to, you know, ride the balance." So that's what we did. Whether we did actually trade it, I did pretty well on that trade. Uh, I probably sold some of it when it was at, I think it reached close to like half a penny. It reached or some insane number like that. Uh, and I was selling. So, you know, sell the rips, buy the dips. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, always, always, sell the always. Rips. So we sold the rips. Yeah. Now, uh, we still have a bunch of Luna in the account. And we also sold it. And we diversified in the chain link, Algorand, uh, Avalanche, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, sell yeah. that. Sell that shit and diversify. <laughs> so, exactly, anyway. exactly. Good moves, good moves. One last comment on the business part. You, when you're describing how you feel personally, right? Actually, reminds me of this again. James Allen quote, right? He said, "He who would accomplish little needs sacrifice little. He who would achieve much must sacrifice much. He who would attain highly must must sacrifice greatly." Right? And I think, like, literally, this quote. It's essentially like, you know, how all this like self-help coaches and even Jordan Peterson, he talks a lot about sacrificing, right? And, and like that, this quote right here is like essentially all these people talk about sacrifice is like literally in this three little sentences here. So I'm from James Allen, like, think I'm growing. Yeah. No, 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 James, James Allen, as a man think is like 100 years ago, literally. So let me riff on that a little bit because, okay, so 
James Allen was, yeah, 100 years ago, and it was a different time. There was a lot of optimism, and there was still work to do. You know, there wasn't even this whole camera <laughs> exchange uh, back then. They had they 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 mostly wrote their books. They wrote books just like James Allen did. So I want to put that quote in like two uh, two categories. The one that you just read, one being the very literal work and build a house, you know, install, you know, there's beams over your head in the picture right there. Be the person who sets the beams, right? Now it's done, you know, step by step and build yourself a beautiful uh, life on this, on this planet, you know, step by step, build yourself something amazing, stack one stone one step on top of another and don't stop working and you already have it. But I think that his meanings probably in that quote probably had more to do with the attainment of, let's just say enlightenment, so to speak, the attainment of uh, the blessed life or, uh, you know, entering into the quote unquote kingdom, things like that. So, you know, the whole phrase is knock and it will be, uh, knock and then, you know, seek and you'll find, knock and the doors will be open. I think that's a lot of, actually some quotes from, from as a man, I think it's in the very beginning of chapters. It's all that stuff about, yeah. you know, seek and you'll find type stuff these days in, in the world that we live in now, you know, we're exposed to so much and you can question everything, you know, uh, and you can even question the secret question, whether or not you're, you're all, like I said earlier, whether or not all your work will indeed result in what you want it to do. Maybe you'll work, 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 work to achieve and sacrifice to achieve, but maybe you won't do it. And, may, and maybe you won't get what you thought, but maybe you learned. Maybe that, maybe the challenge was what you, what you were there to find anyway. You know, a lot of these things are like, you call it alchemical, you know, alchemy, where you take the meaning of something and you transmute the meaning that's called alchemy. So, which or, is a fun fact earlier, not so long ago, I was in Prague and actually I went to this very small museum, but I think in my opinion, one of the coolest museums I've ever been to, they actually have a alchemist museum literally in the city center and a used to be with, I think in the, don't quote me on this, maybe in the 1800s around that time, it was a pharmacy, right? But a pharmacy is literally just a, a facade, right? Which is like, you go through the, you go into the pharmacy and go through the door and then there's like the back door and at the back door, they have a bookshelf and I'm going to probably use a video here. And when you pull that bookshelf and there's, you can go downstairs where that's where they actually do the alchemy stuff. And then, you go down even further, uh, they said they have a tunnel that which probably led to the Prague castle, which is the king was living at the moment uh, in that time, which means that uh, they were saying that the king at that time was sponsored the whole alchemy uh, movements and things like that, because, you know, essentially that's what they want, right? They want the sorcerer's stone from Harry Potter because they want to magnify, you know, their weapons and essentially living forever. But coming back to that, right? Um, I love what you're saying about uh the alchemy process of the literally meaning into something's more profound and probably discovering the truth in this profound text such as you know james Lan james allen's writing and the bhagavad gita and the, the bible so could you elaborate a little bit more on that maddie i will brother i will so throughout the time there are these teachers or messengers whatever you call it right they using their life and using their time and using their work to revealing what is beyond the dust right which is like the truth um and i think like bible and a lot of these religious texts are where a lot of truth are still quite hidden right maybe a lot of people still on the planet still read bible every day but it's like they literally take just take the most literal meaning right but uh, that kind of like missing like the best part of the meal in my opinion so i wanted to um, add yeah so that so that's a good that's a good comment there i wanted to add to which thank you for bringing me back on the subject here brother uh the word yeah, the word might be esoteric, right? So we're hitting a couple of these words that, you know, a lot of people that probably know about, but maybe some don't, man. I mean, especially people that don't speak uh, English as their first language, right? Or even Spanish or Latin or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. You know, esoteric, right? And alchemy, right? And mystical and hidden uh, knowledge. But let's talk about just like esoteric first, right? How's that How's that wine smelling? It smells delicious. It smells like... I smell like a little bit of honey and some like cherries inside because it's like the portal wine is like made out of cherries, delicious, you know, like it's very so, sweet. You know, I got to te Enjoy. teleport half of this bottle to you, you know, after this sure. call. So, cheers. <laughs> cheers yeah. So, I think uh, the word is esoteric. So, it's like things that only a few people understand. It's like an inside joke. The evolution mm -hmm. of the evolution of knowledge, right? They, there's all these, you know, we could get into like what is knowledge, right? Or knowledge with a capital K, right? Or knowledge. Mm -hmm as in two plus two equals four or okay. knowledge as in knowledge of self, right? Two plus two yeah. equals four might be a small knowledge of yourself because you are based on, you know, some mathematical truths or some geometry or existence here. And this, uh, you know, this incarnation does have to do with uh, 
seemingly with some sort of a harmonious math mathematics. But the side of esoteric is that it's not clearly seen, right? It's, it's known only by a few people and it's ready. When I mentioned my favorite book at the beginning of the podcast, in fact, if you can, if you can pull up really quickly, cause you're on your computer, pull up, uh, yeah, all these things added the very first forward to all these things added. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. this might have a little bit to do with what we're talking about between the difference of knowledge with a capital K, which would be like knowledge of existence, knowledge of your own vibes versus knowledge of two plus two equals four. But, uh, yeah, all these things added, there's a really interesting, um, forward. It's probably I mean, it's not as loud. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, you like ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so in seeking for pleasures here and rewards hereafter, men have destroyed in their hearts the temple of righteousness and have wandered, yes, and have wandered from the kingdom of heaven. By ceasing to seek for earthly pleasures and heavenly rewards, the temple of righteousness is restored and the kingdom of heaven is found. This truth is for those who are ready to receive it. And this book also is for those whose souls have been prepared for the acceptance of its teaching. James <laughs> Allen. <laughs> super mysterious, super mysterious. Yeah. So you asked me what's a favorite. I like that. I just, in fact, I love, I love that esoteric, so to speak, uh, description. You know, this book is for those whose souls are prepared for what it has to say. In a way, like I'm not going to like overplay this this particular book. It's still just a great uh, collection of, of thoughts and wisdom. It's not just the most, uh, you know, it's not like uh, it's not going to make you levitate off the ground or anything like that. But uh, it's a good reference to what is like hidden knowledge or what is something that alchemy when you can re- alchemy would be that when you can that when you figure out that something means one thing, but then you figure out it also means something else. So uh, thank you for reading that. James. I don't know. 